This video is going to be a simple tutorial on how to use the place manual point option within Hilti field points. When you are ready to create your point and you've already completed your annotation settings that you can set here in the settings bar, which I have another video about, which you can see in the playlist, simply go to place manual point. Now what you'll see here is that you'll first be asked what entity you want the point to be. You'll see that there's several different options immediately available to you, 3D elements, 2D elements, etc. And if you ever need to change this element or update these elements, you can also go to the settings gear here and change the names of what these points say, hide the ones you don't want to see, and even add a category for these different elements. That is simply an option to you if you need. Furthermore, if you have certain types of point entities that you want to use that you have custom made, you can always follow this file path and drop in your own design or add a location by pressing this ellipse over here and add your own location for your own points. For me, I'll just keep this simple and keep using this circle X option. Please note that if you ever need to edit this field point entity category and you don't want to have to click through the place manual point option to find it, you can always find it in the settings option under setup click down and you'll see point entity settings right here for your convenience. Now the general options for your manual points is simply the description of the point you want to place on it, the layer you want to place your point on, and your annotation preference. Most of the time my annotations are automatic so that when I place my point the annotation automatically places right next to it. Now as far as layer goes if it says by layer this simply will place the point on the layer you have currently active or you can choose your own layer by preference if you so choose. So for my case because I know I'm making my two inch penetrations I will go ahead and use that layer for my points. Now the description is completely your preference as well simply remember that the description is only going to be visible in the model space. When you do end up exporting your points to place them onto a tablet the description will not be included with the CSV. So this is simply a reference for you while you model as you need. And to be honest, I typically leave this blank, which is what I will do so here. If you need more help understanding the annotation settings, simply go and watch the video I have on the annotation settings in the playlist. Now, as far as prefix, suffix, and number go, these are the, this is technically the whole point number. When you do export your CSV, everything in here will be exported with the point. And typically what I do is I don't add a suffix unless I absolutely have to. For my case, I'll go ahead and remove the suffix, but I will add a prefix. And most of the time I keep this simple LP for layout point, WP for working point, CP for control point, etc. Please, of course, make that to your preference. Now the number, you can set this to whatever you want to start at. So you can even start at zero, you can start at 10, etc. And if you ever are coming back here to place new points and you've already placed points with a certain prefix, you can simply press this refresh button to get the next number with that same matching prefix and suffix. So for me, I will start at the number one to keep it simple. Now your elevation settings is completely up to your preference. If you're working in 2D, I would suggest that you simply say at a fixed elevation and make that elevation zero because there's no reason to add any 3D elements to a 2D drawing. So that is an option that I usually use when I'm doing 2D layout. However, if you're working with a 3D drawing, you can always say at object snap elevation. So if you're snapping to an object that's a 3D element, the point will be placed at the elevation of that element as well, which will be helpful, especially if you're going to lay out in 3D as well, that point will have the Z value associated with the design. You can also say, at a distance from object snap elevation, which pretty self-explanatory, it'll go at the elevation plus whatever distance the, you, have, you have placed in here. So this can be negative or positive, your choice. So for me, I'll keep this simple. I'll say this at a fixed elevation of zero because I wanna keep things in a 2D format. Now down here, you can simply add attributes to your points. I'll go ahead and remove my attributes because I don't need any attributes. But if you did wanna add attributes to your points as you lay them out, you can go ahead and type in the different attributes for your points. For instance, if you're laying out sleeves, you might want to indicate the size of the sleeves in the attributes, or you might want to indicate whether or not the sleeve is a fire stop sleeve or a special customized sleeve, etc. And please note that all the attributes will indeed export with the CSV file when you export your point cloud. So now that I know my settings are correct, I'll simply say place. Now when I'm placing my point, know that the object snaps 
that you have set in AutoCAD apply to your point settings. Simply make your object snaps to be whatever you know you're going to be using and go ahead and place your point. So for me, the main one I'm using is center of circles because I'm making sleeves, but of course you can make this whatever you want. So I'll go ahead and zoom into what I know to be my two inch plumbing sleeves and I'll go ahead and mark my points. Now what you'll notice is that the point itself is coming up in the color of pink, which is the same color of my two inch plumbing sleeve layer. And you'll notice that I am actively on a glazing layer. And even though that glazing layer is blue, my points are being placed on the pink layer because that's what I had set. Another thing you'll notice is that my point annotations are coming up white, and that is simply because in my annotation settings, I have my annotation layer as zero. If I needed to have my annotation layer be on the same layer as my points, that setting I would have to do in my annotation settings, and simply my annotation layer I would put on the same exact layer as my points, and now as I place my points, that annotation will show up just as I see with my plumbing point as pink. So just remember your annotation layer and your point layer technically can be on two different layers. Now lastly, you'll notice that there is a colon appearing before all my points. That is simply because in my annotation settings, I have a colon separating the description from the point number. If you are like me and you don't usually use descriptions prior to your points, I would just simply take out the separator. And now when you go and place your point, you'll notice that the colon will no longer appear before the point name. And if some of your annotations seem to have an issue where the annotations for whatever reason are appearing incorrect and you want to fix that in the annotation settings real quick, you can always go to settings, adjust your annotations to what you know you want them to look like. For instance, if I want my text to be a little bit smaller, I can maybe shorten the six inch down to a simple three inch distance for my annotations. Then you can simply highlight the points you need to edit go to annotations and simply apply those new point settings and you'll notice that everything will adjust to those new point settings. Likewise, if for whatever reason you come in here and you edit this text to a different name, so let's say that this is annotated as LP1 and I wanna change that and let's say I just call it some random name, I'll just call it sleeve for instance and I press and I go and get out of that. Even though sleeve appears, the software is going to still recognize that point as having an annotation of LP1. If I was to export this, this point would still be exported out as LP1. And so if ever I accidentally mistype or misprint the annotation after I make the point, that's when I can come in here, highlight that, and simply go to refresh point annotations. That will take it back to what it was originally. Now one last thing is if you ever notice that you have mistyped a layout point name for whatever reason, you can always change the property of that point name so that it is correct. What you need to do if you accidentally type in the wrong point name, simply go to Field Points Properties, select the point you want to edit and press enter. And now you can simply in here change the number or the prefix or the suffix of that point as you please. So I'll go ahead and type LP back in here in the prefix. I'll make sure everything else looks good as well. And I'll say OK. You'll notice that you can even add a new description with the description separator if you want to. So in this case, let's talk about LP3. Let's say that I just want to edit this point to have a description of test. And I'll even add a separator with a colon. And let's say that the first part of the annotation, I want to the point number at the beginning and the description at the end for whatever reason, then I can say OK. And it'll automatically change that annotation setup. Again, this will not change what this looks like when I export. This point still is going to be called LP3. This point is still going to be called LP2. But yes, you can use fill point properties to change how that annotation looks. One last thing regarding annotation and editing your annotations is this option up here called renumber points. If let's say you not only have messed up the annotation, the prefix, the suffix, and the number, you can always go to renumber points. Renumber points lets you choose a new starting number for the point you're going to renumber. So let's say in this case I'll start at the number 10 for whatever reason just for the example. What you can do is you can update not only the number but if you so choose you can also update the prefix and the suffix for the points you want to update. So right now I have LP1 and LP2 if I simply say that I want to update this to, let's say, working point one, 
with the suffix of stake, I can then say OK. And now as I click point to point, these points will update to the new point name that I gave it. WP10 stake, WP11 stake. That again is simply your preference and it does require you to click point by point by point so that the software is ordering your points in the proper numerical order as you choose. Now the final note on this, if for whatever reason you want to use your field points as a way to help you model. And what I mean by that is let's say we've placed these points out here and for whatever reason this circle that we see here is not shown. I have a point there that represents a thing I need to lay out but I want to edit what that area looks like surrounding that point. There is a neat option called place block over points. I've created a, a very basic circle that I've made a block just to show this example. So let's say I want to place a block over a point because I want to edit what that point looks like on the model. I'll simply say place block over points. I will select the block I want to use. It's hard to see, but it's simply a blue circle. I'll select the field point I want to put it on, which is this one here. And I'll say enter and place. Now what you'll see is that big blue circle I made now appears centered on that point. So this is something that you might find useful if you find it easier to place points where you know you need to place objects first and then after the fact place the points on top of it. If that is an easier method for you to model around, that's certainly an option. I simply wanted to show that for your convenience. I know this video is kind of heavy. I wanted to make sure I hit on all the points, but hopefully you could follow through with all the chapters and the segments of the video. But of course, if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments. When you have completed making your points, you then can go to the CSV or export option and have, you have three different export options, which we'll review in another video. TXT and a CSV are simply your point clouds. And an HPL 3.0 is a proprietary Hilti base file that can be placed directly into a tablet with a special import along with the drawing, which we will review in the exports.